please come to order. We'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance and a moment of silence. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. participation. <laughs> Looks like there might be people here that want to speak to something, so who's first on the list? Well, we'll see. Come on down. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I'll make it easy for you. Good evening. Uh, I'm Lou Alvich. I've uh, been in town, town resident for 18 years. Um, I've coached numerous uh, youth sports and uh, also coached uh, high school football. Um, I've been around long enough um, to see the efforts that uh, uh, private citizens and civic organizations um, and angel benefactors have tried to put together to put a turf field in. Um, and that's what I want to talk to you about uh, tonight and um, some of my colleagues here. Um, there are no angel benefactors that are going to come to our rescue. Um, Ten years is long enough to wait. Um, the Booster Club or other civic organizations are not large enough um, to do the fundraising needed to get this done. So what we're asking you to do um, as part of the town government is to own this project, um, to fund it, allocate the money, um, and see it through to, uh, <coughs> to completion. Um, you know, it's a, it's a matter of um, safety, economics, and compliance. From a safety perspective, um, the conditions of our fields are, are just atrocious. Um, so not having a turf field causes overuse. Um, as much as we try not to use the stadium field or try to use fields around town uh, uh, from, a youth, from a youth perspective, they get, they get overused. Um, we have towns that come in that refuse to play on our field. We almost uh, forfeited a lacrosse game a couple years ago because of the condition of the field. Um, with the turf field, it's the same same condition regardless of the weather. Right? We had a rain <coughs> Friday night, um, and now uh, they played. They were fortunate enough to play to play a game um, on it. But now, when you look at the field tonight, it's torn up. It's ruined. Um, so it's not safe for. <coughs> any athletes out there. Um, when you tie that into the economic side of the safety, we're a self-insured town, right? So when there are injuries that happen on our fields, there are uh, typically lawsuits that follow. And with those lawsuits come settlements. When you have a turf field, there are gonna be less injuries, less lawsuits, and less payouts, um, and less, uh, less insurance costs. Talk about economics from a from families moving in. Um, this is not a deciding factor. Obviously, no one's going to move in and say, "Hey, because we have a turf field, I'm going to move to New Milford." But it's a contributing factor. Um, when you look at recreational facilities and the support of the town, they look at Brookfield with four turf fields, Danbury with four turf fields, <coughs> Fairfield with two. Um, South Barrier with one, that's where they're moving to. Um, all those were town funded or bonded. And I think I heard someone mention how cheap money was uh, a couple of meetings ago, and that we should look at bonding. So that, that should be an option for us. Um, additionally, it'll bring people into town. We have no opportunity right now to host state games, tournaments, jamborees at the youth level, they bring in hundreds of families if we can host an all-day tournament. Think about what that does um, to our town, the exposure and the dollars spent with our local vendors. From a compliance perspective, and I think you really need to understand this, um, there are CIAC guidelines. Guidelines, okay, nothing that you have to follow but they're guidelines for a reason. And they put 
guidelines in place um, that say you shouldn't be playing more than three games a week. We don't have, um, just last week the lacrosse team had four games in five days. Now that was because there was a game canceled the previous week because of what field conditions. If there was a turf field, the game would have been played. So now we have four games in five days. Physical toll, safety issue, <coughs> and scholastically, how do they keep up with that? We're putting our kids at a disadvantage. Um, and then lastly, from a compliance perspective um, and legal perspective, is that we might be in violation of Title IX. Field hockey can't use that field. And Title IX is about equal, um, equal access to facilities. You look at where field hockey plays, no stands and no lights. And, that's, and we've been in violation of that for a long, long number of years. Um, but it, you know, I think those are all very, very good reasons, but it's more than just those reasons. Um, it's a matter of what's doing right, of doing what's right for the, town, uh, for the uh, youth of the town. Um, we have a crown jewel at the high school, and we're very proud of what happens inside that school. We're proud of, of the facility itself. It looks brand new, but it's only half done. All right, we'd like to be proud on what on what's happening on the outside also, and give our kids the same amount of um, of uh, support that we do uh, inside the school. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next for public participation, Walter, was there a sign up? Yes. Uh, Sheila? Whoops. Whoa, I'm sorry. No. Uh, Stefan. <laughs> Stefan? Closing up. <laughs> we'll go with that like now. Stefan, all right. <laughs> Thank you very much, sir. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. My name is Stefan Schultz. Uh, I'm a member of the board of Soccer Club of New Milford and representing that uh, club here tonight. Uh, I'll be brief. Thank you very much for the opening remarks. Um, a few points that my, the speaker before or me have not touched upon um, that I would like to make. Uh, one for the soccer club specifically. You play soccer and you practice and you play on grass, and you play all of your away games, which our kids do on turf. It's a world of a difference. Practicing on grass, playing on turf, doesn't work. It is not a good situation. It is not good for the kids, and we'd like to rectify that. Um, it was already mentioned, the postponing of events due to wet fields that has happened. It is not a good situation if you have to play three or four games in a in a week, simply because the fields were unusable and cold when they are. Um, it was mentioned that it's, it is, can be a factor, one factor, absolutely, in whether people make a decision to move to this town or not. And I was in that situation a little over a year ago. I moved here in January 2013, and when I mentioned to my super, I moved from Missouri. The first thing when I uh, talked to my supervisor and I mentioned that my family consisted of three girls that are playing soccer all the time. My supervisor said, well, come to Newtown. We got fantastic fields. I said, well, you know, I'm kind of looking at you more for it. Like, forget it. The fields are terrible. That is not exactly what one wants to hear when one makes a, a decision to go somewhere. Is it the only decision in relocating to a town? Absolutely not. But it certainly doesn't bode well for one making the decision. I've tried this year to schedule three friendly games in New Milford with Newtown, with Salisbury, and with Bethel. All three refused to come. I said, we'd be happy to schedule a friendly game with you guys, but we're not coming to Nimble Park. If you want to have a friendly, you drive. And that's what's happening. And again, as it was mentioned before, we have a beautiful school, state of the art, but then the fields are a little bit up or down. We'd like to run. All the other points that I had have already been made or will be addressed, I guess, by other speakers, so I do not want to take more time. Thank you for your attention, and again, I hope you support this undertaking. Thank you.
go to New Fairfield, Ridgefield, Newtown, we're playing at the high school on their turf fields. Um, I'm watching teams like Brookfield host Jamboree's, making tons of money for the organization, bringing a ton of people into their town, bringing revenue dollars to all the businesses, restaurants. Um, we can't do that because we don't have you know, a facility that can host anything like that. Um, I've witnessed you know, kids get hurt in a contact sport with no contact, just running down the field, step in a divot, step in some sort of a roll an ankle. Um, happened to my kid, he happened to be a little, you know, he's got big feet, but it happened. Um, <laughs> we talked to some people and heard, and I, I don't have facts, that um, there's about a $30,000 a year upkeep to keep those grass fields playable. And that's maintenance, mowing, seeding, lining the fields. You bring the turf field, yeah, there's a, a large number up front. I think you have to line the field once a year. Other than that, there's no other upkeep. Um, the, uh, it, I think it worked out last year at the $30,000, it's about $1,000 per use for that, turf, that stadium field, which is crazy. Um, it just it gets so unplayable, we can't use it any more than that. Um, we've heard that you know, some of our teams make SWC playoffs. One of the main top rules is in order for you to host a home game, you have to have a turf field. We can't do it. So our, our kids that work hard all year to get to that home field advantage, we have to just give it away. Um, everything else I had down, everybody said, I don't want to waste your time, but you know, I urge you guys to please consider this and you know, let's get this ball rolling. We really need the fields. Thanks, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Now I'm down to Sheila. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay. Hi, I'm Sheila Lorenzo, and I've been in the town for 17 years now. I have a daughter who is a freshman and a son who is a junior at high school. My children are very heavy duty in sports and have been <coughs> years, and they both are in lacrosse. And I just want to back up some things that have been said. And my son was one of the ones that was affected by that rain out game and had to have four games last week. Well, he also is in honors and AP classes and had to take tests. I'm not sure how he did on those tests, to be honest with you, because his time for studying was probably taken over by the sports team game being re, you know, changed to the following week. And honestly, at this point, if I was somebody with children who I knew were going to be athletics, I would not choose to move to this town because of the reason. And because they're, they're surrounding areas. It's not like... You know, the other areas, it's, you know, intermixed where, you know, there are some regular fields and turf. It's predominantly turf. We are definitely on the low end of the spectrum here. And it would totally discourage me from moving to this town. It's a great town, and I, I feel sad about that. So I urge you to really consider. Thank you. Thank you. Same speech I heard on at the <laughs> finals. Right. Uh, I it's a new one. I bought Polar at 28 Treadwell Avenue. Uh, just uh, for your information, uh, Tuesday 27th at 7:30 at uh, the Sarah Noble uh, School, we're going to be discussing and uh, possibly taking action on the school closing. I learned from Pat, and I apologize to you, Paul, and to. Pat, because it was fun to have Pat on this uh, sitting beside her when I did on uh, town council. Uh, that turns out to be a conflict. And, uh, I just learned about it. I don't have the agenda, but I assume the agenda is similar. Paul, I was looking forward to hearing more about ancient history, uh, especially the Egyptian history, uh, in your presentation uh, on the 27th. I guess I'm going to miss out on that. Uh, it seems strange to be here and not seeing Ray O'Brien. I served with him, I enjoyed my time with him. It just doesn't seem like a town council meeting without Ray. I know the meeting's gonna be shorter without Ray. Hey. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I used to give Ray a hard time. I said, if you keep on talking, I'm gonna vote against it. No uh, one frames a better motion. I, uh, I miss Ray and it doesn't feel the same without him. What I wanna read into the record um, for the secretary to project Pat and I fully understand, and I know uh, Peter does, and I know many of you people who have been on the board, but for the record,
We do have a uh, item about finance um, uh, committee, and I think Pat and I go back a long way, so this, this is not for her, but I want to be able to refer to the minutes on this. I'm using the Connecticut school law by Mooney, I'm sure my buddy over there has not the sixth edition, maybe the tenth edition uh, of this. But here's a quote I want to uh, take out of this. As regards to the provision of educational services, however, a bo board of education may be met independently of town council. The Connecticut Education in Connecticut is a state responsibility and the General Assembly has delegated the responsibility to each local and region board of education. As school boards carry out their responsibility, they act as agents of the state. I know that your item doesn't say that you're going to do that, but I wanted to, on the record that we all know that what you might be planning on doing is an umbrella that might be effective and what I do ask, if you would please, when you, if you decide to um, have the committee, please ask our chair of the Board of Ed for the members for my committee uh, to join you, because people are not here tonight who may like to express that. Uh, I know you, uh, Pete, uh, spent a couple of years ago looking at the efficiency between the two. Uh, so I know that's going to be reviewed. But uh, not to insult people who already know that, I just wanted it for the record. Um, the, the Board of Ed and the town, and I do like the fact that the mayor got upset with me about the fact that they shouldn't know about the special meetings. We need to be able to come together. We're a town. And especially if we're going to consider this, it's going to be some time for people to step back and look at each other differently. I congratulate Ray, as I did to Greg Miller, on the excellent report we got from the auditors praising the town as well as the Board of Ed. So thank you for the time, Mayor. I'm disappointed if you're not going to be here because I would like to have the time to talk to you again um, at the same table. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Matt. <coughs> okay. Marshall. share a little thought with you. Um, I saw recently in the paper about this uh, health idea concerning smoking and the parks. And um, a few years ago, Stella Honorado, I don't know if you remember <laughs> Stella, yes. but she told me this story, and of course, Treadwell was my old neighborhood, how the hospital had passed this feel good crack down on smoking rule that people could not smoke anywhere on the hospital grounds. Not in the parking lot, not in their own car, nowhere on the property. And living on Treadwell Avenue, she told about the neighbors wondering, who are these people parking out in front of my house? Are they planning to rob me? Are they, you know, curious about kidnapping my kid? What's going on? And it turned out that these were smoker refugees from the hospital ordinance, or whatever you want to call it. So keeping that in mind, when it came up in the paper that there was this idea that smokers can't smoke in the playground where children play, it just occurred to me that, well, smokers are addicted to, to the nicotine and they're going to smoke. And if they're not going to smoke while their kid is using slides and swings, well, they're going to smoke in their car with their young child before or after or both because they can't smoke out in the air. And um, it seems to me like a feel-good thing that would really more
more affect the young children of smokers with more smoke, secondhand smoke um, while making everyone feel really good. So that was my thought. Thank you. Thank you, Marshall. That was the end of the list, Madam Mayor. So anyone else want to speak in public participation? I'm Dawn Hunt. I coach the field hockey team at Milford for the last 20 years. Um, and I moved here when I was two and a half, just a couple of years more than the 20. Um, and I also coach uh, the throwers for our track and field team. And I'm, I want to talk a little bit. Just make it sure. No, no, that's fine. Okay. Um, I want to thank you all for your service to the town. It takes a lot of dedication. I appreciate that. Um, and hopefully I can clear a couple of issues. Do we, we miss uh, last year one in six uh, practice days to rain or whatever that we wouldn't have missed? This isn't a deluge or lightning that everybody would miss, but purely because we don't have turf. And usually that happens in chunks of times, so two or three days in a row. So we may not have practice Monday through Wednesday, and then have to play games Thursday, Friday, Sunday, putting our kids at very much risk. <clears throat> the last year our team was ranked number seven in all of Connecticut. Not our division, all of Connecticut. The top teams will not come. Simsbury, Lassiter, New Canaan, Darien, Wilton, we won't play them, we go there. But totally unfair to our kids. <clears throat> we pay, placed 35 kids in colleges. They all play in turf. They all play in turf in college. <clears throat> Every semifinal and final game in field hockey, by rule, has to be played on turf. If we make those games, we give up our home field advantage, we move on. In my 20 years, we have never played a home SWC final game. The only teams that have ever won an SWC tournament are Milford, Trump Rock, and one each for the Wolken Hall and Newtown. Our kids are at a tremendous disadvantage. Not only are we getting backed up because they're by the rain outs, but we end up at the end of the season when we're playing the hardest games. Last year we had four games in the last week of the season. We we're supposed to have two. So they're in exams. They're playing the hardest games. They're going to overtime, double overtime, possibly triple overtime. And we're going from 11 players on the field to seven. And they're doing four of those in a week instead of two because we aren't providing them with what they need. Um, <clears throat> we are, cannot have uh, senior night except on our field. They've tried everything. They've brought in construction lights. We've had the construction lights turn off in the middle of the game. We try to have announcements. We have a bullhorn that nobody can hear us to announce senior night. So we aren't maybe, kind of, could be sort of in uh, violation of Title IX. Title IX, for anybody who doesn't know, provides that equality in sports. If we're providing A-level equipment for one team, we provide that for all the teams. If some teams are supposed to have night games, everybody's supposed to have night games. If somebody plays all night games, that to my team is also supposed to be afforded that opportunity. We've considered bringing our night games to another school, which I'll bring to my seniors and give them the opportunity, but they really, it's kind of disheartening. So if we wanted to play, for instance, we've got New Canaan to come up, Brookfield is long as their field. So we give up a home game to trap. The Lucky Brookfield's close. Will they let us do that forever? I don't know. <clears throat> I gave some of the analogy it's like taking your teenager out into the parking lot to teach them to drive. And that's a fabulous start. Everybody's starting in a parking lot or a backfield somewhere where there's nothing to hit. You can go your five miles an hour, maybe back out at 10 or 15. And 
that's what we do. We plant our, tur our grass. But then when you go on the turf fields, it's much more like driving on a highway. So we go from being at home, practicing in a parking lot, to, okay, girls, today we're on the highway. You have 20 minutes to warm up. If you're lucky, get up to speed. It's a different world. It's a different world. To me, we should be discussing whether we're doing two fields. We should be discussing are we doing five fields with as much use as our town has, and with the surroundings that are around here, and as many students as we have. Right now, there are three Class L schools that don't have turf in your backyard. We're one of the three. It's not where we want to be. It's not where we want to be. And we do a fabulous job on so, so many things. Please help us catch up in this area. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, who's next? Well, thank you. We don't usually get this turn out. <laughs> Appreciate it. Then we will move on to Pete. Mayor, uh, since we have everybody here this evening, I was hoping that uh, since Mr. Coppola had said that um, you could talk with the other that chair and if you could close future agenda, bring this back before us, and maybe come up with a subcommittee with the Board of Ed to come up with a solution with these committees. Sure. Okay, the next one is approval of prior minutes for April 28th. So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? Corrections? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? <coughs> Abstain? The Pete? I'd like to uh, approve the appointments for the following. The late William Noah Authority, uh, Mr. Kevin Brooks, Brian Flanagan, John Kabuzzi, Christopher Rosado, Kevin Seeley, and Patricia Seeley, all with the terms 5-12-2014 to 10-31-2013. I think it's Patrick Seeley, is Second. Yes. Patrick. Yep. And Tom seconded. And just uh, for an update, these are our patrol officers. They're all police officers um, for the Lake Willanona Authority. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Item 5, we are moving to May 27th um, because it will be a photo opportunity with the members of this board and um, the Substance Abuse Council. And so because we had some necessary absentees tonight, we didn't want to leave out our uh, fellow council members with this topic, so we'll be uh, moving that to the 27th. Um, Mayor, I don't have to wear a shirt and tie huh? No, actually, we're going to provide you with some <laughs> attire. We'll dress you well. It's a surprise, Walter. <laughs> supposed to go ruin my surprise. Oh, oh. No tie. <laughs> keep quiet there. Um, item six is fun and still light out. So we're gonna run downstairs and see that new senior bus. Carolyn is here with her driver, Tom, to show you the matching grant program and the assistance, which it means a donation from the New Milford Lions Club and the town of New Milford. And wait till you see the really cool senior bus. So we're gonna run downstairs. The camera can work? No. Unless you want to bring the camera to the picture of it. Excursion out 
outside to the new bus. And again, we thank um, the New Milford Lions Club for their donation and also um, the grant that we received for that bus. And I really didn't have any comments because we had some other items that I was going to comment on, but they're not on the agenda anymore, so you guys are lucky. Item 8 is the Parks and Rec uh, request to <coughs> close the roads that are listed here on the agenda during the 47th Annual 8 Mile and 5K Road Race. And also a little update, I know there was an issue with regard to where the race starts and where the truck for Rotary is or the trailer, and that's been resolved with Parks and Rec. So for any of the Rotary members, your trailer is going to go back to where it used to be, originally was, and not be required to move uh, during the race with the hot grease or any of that kind of stuff. So. Eric, can we so move this, or would you like to spread into the minutes the, the actual closing comments? I think it would be more helpful to the public for the end. I'd like to make a motion uh, a request to close the following roads during the 47th annual 8 mile and 5k road race on Saturday, July 26th. 2014 with a start time of 9 a.m. From 6 a.m. to 11 a.m. Main Street southbound from the corner of Bank Street to Bridge Street. 7 a.m. to 9.05 a.m. Main Street northbound from the corner of Bridge Street to Elm Street. 9.01 a.m. to 11 a.m. Main Street southbound from the corner of Bennett Street to Bridge Street. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? And we will notify the traffic authority. Just to make sure. Thank you. Um, item 9, letter A, is discussion and possible action to propose aggressive panhandling control ordinance pursuant to CGS section 7-148 and charter section 406P. Thank you, Mayor. I would like to make a motion to approve the proposed aggressive panhandling control ordinance pursuant to CGS section 7-148 and charter section 406. Second. A motion's been made and seconded. And Randy, if you would please sure. give me a few moments of, for um, some of the councilmen were not here uh, when you explained some of the um, background kind of ordinance and also it was um, identified that items two, three, four, and five and six don't have the word aggressive prior to the word panhandling so I'd like to make sure that that gets adjusted. Two, three, four, five, and six. They just say panhandling. Two, three, four, five, and six really are, uh, are definitional. The reason they don't say aggressive is because aggressive panhandling is, is described in number two, aggressive okay. panhandling means. But you can do what you want with those. The reality of it is that what this what this is designed to do is to uh, not control begging or not to prohibit speech, is to prohibit behavior that is that is uh, or sometimes associated with that and other behavior, by the way. That's what this is designed to do. It's a very narrow ordinance. Um, the, the, the the proposal that was put forth was the Danbury ordinance. I spoke with some people in Danbury. There have been, there have been uh, anecdotally anyway, I've been told. I don't know how accurate this is, that there have been no arrests, but it helps a lot with, with, with moving on things of that nature. Uh, and that's anecdotal. There's no records that, that, that say that. The reality is that of, that of this is that the police, I've been told by our chief, uh, just would use this as a tool to help control not the speech, not the content, but the aggression. And that's the concerns that the mayor expressed to me when she said, when she instructed me to draft something like this. Um, I, obviously, we've done some exhaustive research on this. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Mayor. And I know, Randy, thank you for speaking again on behalf, like you did at the last meeting concerning this. And just for the record, again, as you just stated, it is a tool for an officer to use, and it is that officer discretion. Absolutely. Well, it does not take any discretion away from a sworn officer. Right. And, and, and as a matter of fact, it can't. It's not, there's, no, there's no ordinance that is allowed to do that. So with that, you could deter them without... Should it become necessary. Correct. Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mayor. You're welcome. Um, any other questions on the agenda here? Anybody? Joe? Uh, 
just speaking on the issue of, of the wording of this, uh, I'm sufficiently satisfied with the tremendous amount of detail and research that came into to by counsel on this issue. Uh, and to adjust the wording, although not impossible, starts to make the ordinance overly uh, wordy and subject to more interpretation than need be, and it's narrow as it is, and I'm sufficiently satisfied with it. Thank you. So I would like to get an idea from the council overall with regard to that um, definitions on the back page. Any other? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? As, as drawn, Your Honor? As drawn? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. No. Oh, <laughs> sorry. Um, B is discussion and potential action regarding combining the town and board of education finance department. A, possibly establishing a subcommittee with members from the town council, board of education, and finance departments. B, possibly hiring a consultant to assist the committee. This is on here due to uh, inquiries over time, and I thought that it would be prudent to consider while we're installing a million dollar software program um, to review some of the job descriptions and duties and services that are being presented to the public. Now, um, of course, this does not mean that the town in any way would be in charge of Board of Education money. That is not what this is for, absolutely not. This is to review um, the different personnel responsibilities and job changes that might occur or job descriptions that might need to be changed with an impartial consultant and I was recommending some members from the Board of Ed, members of the Council, somebody from finance from each side, and a consultant that has not yet been chosen, so it would be this committee looking into that, to make sure that in our quest for efficiency with regard to purchasing this software, we also review the personnel and the support of it and the distribution of the work. And so that is my intent. There, I did call the Board of Ed Chair and update her and um, that's it. Walter? When, when I read the uh, proposed intent here, my, my first thought was, uh, is this legal? Would this be a violation of uh, a state statute? And uh, it would you know, be a the violation power of the purse, who's, who's going to be in charge of the power of the purse here? Right. And uh, I kept thinking about it, thinking about it. Tomorrow we're going uh, to vote. But we're taking two votes. Right. Right. One will be on the town budget. The other one will be on the uh, Board, uh, of Board of Education. I was also curious, does any other town do this? This uh, kind of a combo thing? Well, I know Plain, I think it's Plainfield did when they did their munis. Uh, program, they combine their departments. And it doesn't mean that the town is in charge of Board of Ed money. That's not allowed. But you might have personnel with shared duties. Um, our finance director is the town treasurer for everybody as it is. It's his name on everything um, already. And this was to make sure that in our modernization of our IT, that we also match that with skill sets of our personnel. Has nothing to do, I don't want the Board of Ed money. That's what they do, and yeah. that's what they're in charge of. We get in enough trouble for our own stuff. I, so, you know, I, I, I appreciate your explanation, and I, I, and I understand your intent, and I'm not uh, in disagreement with it. But I, I just said to myself, now, what's that old biblical story when someone came up and uh, said to this holy man, uh, whose image is on this coin? And the answer was, of course, you render to Caesar the things that belong to Caesar. You render to the Board of Education the things that belong to the Board of Education. So if this is, they take care of their business, the town takes care of, rail take care of uh, the town business. And then I 
you know, have no problem with the intent. And don't forget, the committee could say, no, this is not an advantage. And people have continually wondered. Okay. So and this could also invest help. Investigation, nothing wrong with investigation. My concern was the power of the purse. And that's why I was trying to put discussion and potential action, possibly and possibly, so right. that you would get the idea that it's mostly to look at. Well, it, it, I, have. I didn't want it to be a slippery slope. Yep. And all of a sudden you can say, well, you know, in the Board of Education uh, budget here, we can now eliminate. That would it be illegal for me to try yeah. to get in there. Okay. Yeah, okay, uh, yeah. It, to me, was unclear. I expected unclear. questions all around. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I'll keep going. Thank you, Pete. Thank you, Mary James. Oh, for me. I know Joe was. And then Mary Jane. Okay. Uh, this possible subcommittee, I, I would hope we could get Mr. Hall to be involved there as he, he's tonight spoken on it. And uh, it, it, it goes to uh, effectively running the town. Um, all these different accounts are very stru structured and will be more uh, open for view and review under our new unit system. We will actually be able to see and track all the dollars and, and keep, uh, as we know by law, the, the Board of Ed needs to be responsible for their own money. But it's something we've looked at uh, in addition to combining other uh, departments within the town, and, and it's a subcommittee. That's at least if they come back and say it does it doesn't look like it could work, then then we I would believe we'd follow with the recommendations. And it would be from the BOE chair that we would be asking uh, for people. I'm sure she'll have tons of volunteers over there. Yes. Um, thank you, Joe. Mary Jane. Um, I have a question about the um, possibly hiring. The Well, I'm sure the town or, um, it might be. I'm sure the committee would review where they could get funds from who or how much. Would there be and I don't know what the dollar amount is. It might be from contingency. And I don't know the dollar. Like I said, I tried to make it as committee based as possible mm -hmm. with me predetermining things. I didn't want anyone to think there was a skewing of any kind. So I have no idea. Mm -hmm. I do know that. Danbury is looking at it. I don't know how far they've gotten. I don't know who their consultant is. I don't know what it costs, but it's been discussed here for years, and I figured if the committee looks at it, we could at least know something before we keep talking. And I have another question. Um, you talked about um, reviewing you know, personal job descriptions. Mm -hmm. um, is this just the people that would be using the software you're talking about? Or what well, some of the about? functions that the software does do now is done manually by people. So you may need to redistribute how you utilize your workforce or not, depending on what the functions are that the job calls for. You may have some other things you've always wished you had personnel for that now maybe that person has time to do because the software could do some of the transactions or make some of the calculations that now are being done manually or with a different bench. That would be something the consultant could help because I'm sure that none of us are really trained in those kinds of efficiencies. All right, and I, I guess I just, I was a little surprised um, nobody knew about this on the Board of Education. I happened to send out the, um, the, count, the agenda to, to our Board of Ed members and and then the word got out. Nobody knew about it. How come? How come? Before our agenda came out, they didn't even. Well, I don't discuss idea. with other departments, but I do know that the topic was discussed with some of board of ed members in the past, not <coughs> the date of when it would appear on an agenda. But people had heard the conversation, and as a matter of fact, Mr. Coppola reminded me that ten years ago mm -hmm. he and I talked about it. Mm -hmm. um, but as far as when the date would be that it would come up. Mm -hmm. It just happens that with some of the different functions that this software provides, it's a good time to review 
what our job descriptions are, the service it's providing the employees or the public, where can we be more efficient with our personnel? I mean, nobody, it's not like we all have extra personnel, so maybe we get some other duties covered that would have been nice to have that now the computer will assist us or do things better or not. Maybe we're exactly where we need to be. Um, Pete. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to um, set up a subcommittee with uh, three to four members of town council, three to four members of board of ed, um, Mr. Ray Jankowski and Greg from the board of ed. Well, whoever their new finance right, whoever they, or whoever's going to be there. I'll second the finance. Them. Six out of nine. Do we do we want to take that to the vote tonight? Doesn't that motion call for a vote? Well, he's going to speak to his motion. He was seconded, so you all are free to discuss it this whole time. Okay, I I I like to table it until we have a full board and get comments from uh, the entire group. Can Pete speak to oh, his motion uh, first? Of course. <laughs> Thank you. You're the chair. <laughs> um, I think it's a good idea that both the Board of Ed and the town uh, communicate. And I think uh, when we sat on our subcommittee, one of the things that I thought was very beneficial was we were actually communicating with one another and learning things that we didn't know about from the school side and they didn't know from the town side. So I think as far as having equal members from both boards, communicating, talking to one another, figuring out solutions and opportunities that we can get with this new software that may be allowing for more um, efficiency, maybe allowing for more opportunity to better the function, to better the functionality, which is a win-win for the town. Because that's who's ba basically, you know, we went on the endeavor of Munis, and I think it's a good opportunity for those guys to visit that and see what's what's beneficial and what works. And obviously, their personnel is their personnel. Town personnel is town personnel. Huh? Oh, I thought I knew there was a hand over here, and then Aaron and then back to you, Walker. Joe. I believe Mary Jane, you were. Do you all that this thank you all that this does is open dialogue. That's all that we're looking to move to do tonight. We're not taking any action whatsoever on anything other than open dialogue about potential. And that's if we wait for all nine of us to be here for every vote, uh, a lot of a lot of things are going to get adjourned and just delayed. And so all it's doing is opening up a. a, a, a Avenue of communication and dialogue between the Board of Ed, the Town, and the Department of Finance to uh, discuss this. And it's obvious in this discussion tonight, it, we're reaching out to the Board of Education uh, to uh, get them. They have to be involved in this. They have to be a, they're an integral part of, of this something of this significance. So uh, I'm comfortable with with us voting on opening this this avenue of dialogue. Thank you. Mary Jane? Um, I'd just like to say that as we set up the subcommittee, um, I would just like to respectfully request that there be an equal number of Democrats and Republicans on the committee. I, I have no problem with uh, Councilman Bass's uh, explanation, and, and you know I'm sympathetical with that. No question about that. I had no problem uh, with your comments either. You used the term significant, 
All I'm saying here, there's only two thirds of the board here. Should this board have a consensus from the nine members instead of six? With regard to efficiencies? No, with regard to taking a vote on establishment. This well, this is a legal quorum. Five and up. So I don't want to the go board. out to come back and bite me in the butt. If, because three people are not here and I have no input right now. That's all I'm saying. I do sense a consensus of the six of us. No question about it. Councilman Bass, again, on the money. On the money, your intent on the money. Councilman Bass, explanation on the money. We're talking something of the term significant. Maybe I should ask for a legal opinion. Motion to table is not, not up for discussion. Okay. It's moved, moved, seconded, and, and whatever. That's how it's done. So it's really up to the, the, the chair's pleasure. So Walter made a motion to table. So well, I had, to I had no second, though. So that he didn't have a second, and so there's already a motion on the table. Yeah, right. so that. Right. I'll second it. Okay. So you have a motion on the table. You have to get. Yeah, he already did have his motion. Oh. That's one second. So you, in other words, if there's a motion on the table, you then you can't table it. Right. You have to table it before a motion is made. Right. Second. Oh, oh, thank you. That's what I was double checking here because I'm thinking, wait a minute. <laughs> the only thing you could have done. Never mind. <laughs> That's a few. Any other input? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? I'm going to be opposed. I'm, I'm, I'm uncomfortable with this, with the Same. lack of uh, full, uh, full uh, board membership. Okay. Abstain? All right. Item C is the uh, one year lease and operations agreement for farming operations at Sullivan Farm. I gave you an update at the last meeting with regard to um, the moratorium that Prince of Sullivan Farm have requested for a year. And their um, farm manager, Joe, is pursuing his master's now. While that's great for Joe, it kind of leaves us a short window to repopulate farming, so I had passed on to Attorney Devella several examples of local land trust lease agreements um, with the farmers that they have actually running their farms. And so Randy has crafted a simple lease agreement for this um, young couple of local families to farm the field. If you're looking at the barn, it's to the right of the barns and um, take care of, not the sugar shack, but the barns and the, far the farmland immediately to the right. And then the uh, director of the youth agency is going to cut the hay out on the back fields. And then when he has his work crews maintaining the uh, different fields and bridges for the land trusts and such in the area, he's also going to include the trails at Sullivan Farm so that we can cover this year with um, continued farm operations in an organic fashion, because I believe this was the third year, which is what you need to be certified organic um, in the state of Connecticut. And so um, we've ass they've assured that they will continue to keep that manual um, so that we can receive that certification from the state. And uh, Randy. This is a rather unremarkable uh, lease and operations agreement. It's only for a year. <laughs> and the reason, the reason that the, this happened very, very fast because the, mayor needs to, because the land's fallow right now and it needs to be worked. The mayor uh, uh, instructed me last week to cobble a, um, a lease and operations agreement together. This closely follows one that we have uh, implemented that the mayor actually, uh, I believe, negotiated uh, concerning the, uh, pro another milk property. On town and milk property. It calls for best management practices in accordance with the mayor's instructions to the other side, to the uh, to the tenants. There are um, it's real. It's quite unremarkable because what they're required to do is farm it in a in a, in a prudent and, and best management way, and that's what it's about. It's designed to get the property uh, working, <coughs> and uh, the mayor instructed us to do that. 
and that's what this this is. There, it's going to need some tweaks, but it needs approval because this property has to they have to get going on this. The other update to those of you that weren't here is that the Friends of Sullivan Farms still mm -hmm. plan to do um, three or four programs and functions out there this year also. And, and there's of course, this does not preclude the public's ability to access the land out there. Yeah, and then no eventual terms thereof be construed to the town from using the farm ground. Joe? I think it's a wonderful idea to get things moving on there quickly. I know there's a little bit of concern. Uh, it's farm land we want, we'd like to see a farm. And I, time is of the essence with, with the fact of plowing, sowing seed, et cetera. I know so little about that. You if you look at my own personal garden, you will know that. <laughs> <laughs> you originally wanted to be on farm. <laughs> That's the <a> way. <laughs> There's days I would. I can see the way. Thank you. Mary Jane. Um, I just have a, a question about, um, it says, um, let's see, whereas the tenant desires to commence farm operations on the farm premises for vegetable and fruit crops utilizing natural guidelines, I would prefer that you just said that they're going to continue with organic. Yeah. So I would like to see that change to organic because I think natural. That should say organic because the copy I corrected because that's two different was replaced. Two different meanings. It was it was changed it to organic. Yes, it was. Good catch. Right. Right. Because natural does not. No, that's you're absolutely right. Could Pete get a copy of that? I'm sorry, Pete. You want? We've also taken out the. Included best man practices. Taken out for commercial fertilizer. If uh, I see in here that they're going to be allowed to use all of our uh, existing tools, implements, vehicles, and, and farm equipment, yeah, right. Uh, who's to say that they'll operate it properly? What if they don't operate it properly? What if they get hurt utilizing our equipment? Well, they're required to be insured, and then we sue them. Okay, but the medical expense is only five thousand dollars. Yeah, that's for their own personal part. liability. They're not going to be teaching and having. I know, but I'm saying to say track them. They can fall off and as farmers have and get hurt. And I just saw medical expenses five thousand so dollars. That's a standard endorsement of uh, uh, without regard to fall. And, and the town is taking on the maintenance of all the vehicles and we're paying for the fuel also. For use for farming, because I'm. This is not. Um, <coughs> This is not an established farmer that's coming over just to use the field. These are two farming kids who have asked to lease the farmland and run the fruit stand, well, fruit stand, not fruit stand, um, farm stand. Farm stand. And as far as I know, they have good references with regard to their background, and both of them do work on farms now. Um, but we have the equipment, and they would not have the equipment. So this is yeah, just to keep our land yeah. in place. No, I, I yeah. agree with the principle completely. It's just uh, okay, this last minute, I just wanted to show those way up. Well, and to look at that too, one of the things I thought was kind of interesting in the Kent Land Trust and the farm that they have on Route 7, yeah. um, awesome. I used that as a model also, and they charge a dollar. Rent, and they pay for all their stuff on that their place. DPW. And they get to keep <coughs> not the DPW because this is a Kent Land Trust, oh. but the Land Trust owns all the equipment. Correct. And um, I know they get a discount, discounted rental rate also on the houses they rent. And then there's one that's $100 a year. Is that the Sunny Valley one? I'm getting it confused. Don't quote me on exactly which one it is. Um, and the farm equipment that's there is what they use, but it's only to use at the farm for the farm. It's not for taking home or any of that. But I'm sure that it's open to some other kind of adjustment. Thanks. I'd like to move to authorize. Uh, oh, Mary oh Jane. was there no authorized? Um, I'm Jay. I, saw, I caught that on Jay there. Yeah, I'm so. Jay. There's also. Natural, it be yeah, I out all that, so I'm glad you're catching it. Because so, when well, I sat down with uh, Reba and Graham, I went through and crossed all that out to organic. Of course, I did it with a pencil, not a computer. 
I'll uh, need to authorize the, the mayor, Patricia Murphy, to uh, sign a one-year lease and operating agreement for farming operation Solomon Farm with amendments and adjustments, particularly for words such as natural or organic where appropriate. Second. Thank you. Other discussion? I would encourage you to talk to these um, young people if you get the opportunity because, boy, are they serious. After I finish it, you can. We haven't signed it yet, so okay. once we have that, that done, you'll get a copy of it. So. Great. Okay. Yes. So that was a motion made and seconded. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Thank, Thank you, you Randy. Thank you. Um, Paul's abstaining. Let's see. Department of Public Works. Mike. Z, who was originally going to do this presentation, had death in the family, so um, that's his afternoon he left. So that'll be on the 27th. So it's getting moved? It is. I should have said that in the beginning, but I'm sorry in case you stayed here to listen to recycling. Bob. I will be. Okay. Uh, the item 11, which some of you, depending on how long you've been here, is with regard to the audit. And for years, every year, the auditors would prefer that these accounts get closed and the money move to the general fund or the capital reserve or whatever. And some of these go back. 15, 20 years, they're just accounts that have always been carried forward, the projects are complete, and the money was never put back in. So we were recommending it go to the capital reserve account. If you have any questions, I have Ray here this evening. Pete? Do you need a, uh, a motion? I'd like to make a motion to close the following accounts as recommended by the auditor. The total amount of 52,451.60 and appropriate to the capital reserve account. Lanesville Road Connector, fund number 71 for $1,288.77. Great Fork Sewer, fund number 69 for $3,567.69. Volunteer Fire and Ambulance Personnel, prior to the tax credit program, number 64 for $1,290.25. Westside Sewer, fund, fund number 61, 20,906.12. Latchkey Scholarships, fund number 58, for $9,053.62. Skatico School Renovation, fund number 57, for $15,313.21. Federal Reserve Sharing, fund number 37, 2,031.94 bringing the total to 52,451.60. Sure. Thank you, Secretary. Questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Abstain? Item 12, the one I know you were all waiting for, <laughs> executive session. We'd like to invite in the attorneys, um, Ken Taylor and Kent Mancini, and the personnel director, Al Chapin, executive session. No motions were made, no votes taken. And we're moving on to item 13, which is personnel discussion and possible action on ASCII Council for Local 1303-183 proposed collective bargaining agreement. And it requires a supplemental appropriation of $10,779.12 because although we carry these monies forward while we're negotiating contracts, we're short $10,779.12. We do have enough money in contingency, but I don't have the total memorized and Ray is unavailable right now. Two different amounts. Two different amounts. Uh, you know, right. one or two. Both of them. 
Two different accounts. Two different amounts. Right. Total 36 and change. Right, from two different accounts. Okay. What are those accounts? Well, it's listed there. Payroll. Absolute payroll. And this one the other was completely the same. Now I don't have the name. Could you text me? That's okay. I think it's contingency. The first one. This is the Oh. Well, they're, the accounts Ray told me. We can look it up. I need a motion. So moved. Second. And discussion? We got to make sure we get on record those dollar amounts in those accounts. That one. I'll make a motion. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And the mayor's authorized to execute the contract. Make a motion for the mayor to execute the contract for the AFSCME Council for Local 1303-183 proposed collective bargaining agreement to supplemental appropriation of $10,779.12 from account 6025-48-1000 and $26,169.01 from account number 6026-001-0001 to various AFSCME payroll accounts as determined by the Director of Finance. And I also direct the mayor to sign the contract. Further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Abstained? Motion to adjourn, Madam Mayor. Thank you very much. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Opposed?